I'm Nate. Today, let's look at Bad Batch, Season 3, Episode 15, The Cavalry Has Arrived. In this episode, it's an all-out battle to the end as the guys look to rescue Omega and the other clones, and Omega uses her skills to create a diversion and escape. Written by Jennifer Corbett, Episode 15 was released on May 1, 2024 on Disney+. In grand Filoni fashion, the Bad Batch series ends with a killer finale that wraps up all the character arcs that we've been following puts a bow on top with a touching final scene, and pushes us forward to the next thing. There is a lot I could talk about with this episode, but for right now, I'm just going to focus on the three prongs of effort that are going on. Those being one, Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair, two, Omega and the Children, and three, Echo and Emery Carr. The episode picks up where the last episode left off. Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair are trying to get into the base in Mount Tantis. Crosshair tells Hunter and Wrecker to save themselves and go find a communications tower where they can call Rex for reinforcements. Crosshair feels this is going to be it for him anyway, so he's looking to sacrifice himself for Omega's sake. But Hunter and Wrecker refuse, saying, don't even think about Plan 99. Though we never get told explicitly what Plan 99 is, we know it involves one of the members of Clone Force 99 sacrificing his life so the others may live. They make their way into the base through the hole that the Zillow Beast has made in the walls and are confronted with Hemlock's CX Troopers, clones that have been modified. It's fitting that in their final battle against the final boss, they go head to head against modified clone troopers much like themselves. The real difference here is that Hemlock's clones are not designed to think for themselves. They're given a task and head off like robots. They have been conditioned to take any task they are given and carry it out to its most violent and final end possible. Whereas the Bad Batch was designed and conditioned to evaluate the battlefield and the situation and determine the requisite force needed to accomplish the mission or to back down if the mission is not worthwhile. In episode 14, Hunter makes a call to move towards the science vessel before getting the word from Echo that its proximity alarms have been disabled. It's a gutsy and dangerous move. He knew the risks, but went anyway. The CX troopers don't evaluate risk at all. This is in stark contrast to the Bad Batch. And this is what makes the battle between Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair and the CX troopers so good. There's too much at stake for the guys to evaluate the risk. They make a conscious decision to throw all caution to the wind. The CX troopers, on the other hand, do not know what is at stake. In the ensuing battle, Hunter and Wrecker get beat up really bad and Crosshair loses his shooting hand. Throughout the season, Crosshair has dealt with the issue of his twitching firing hand. In the climax scene, when he shoots Hemlock, he has to use his non-firing hand, which is incredibly difficult to do. But the significance of this is that Crosshair was blinded by his faulty hand, or on a character level, he was blinded by his character failings and the things that the Empire did to him. Without his firing hand, he is forced to use his non-firing hand, and he rediscovers his sniper skills. In essence, by losing his hand, Crosshair lets go of his failings in order to become the man that he is supposed to become. With Omega, throughout the series she has had several opportunities to lead or do a mission on her own, but this is the first time that she has had the opportunity to put a team together, plan a mission, execute that mission, and lead her team on her own and she uses all the skills she learned from her brothers doing it. She leads like Hunter, she strategizes like Echo, she encourages her team like Wrecker, she handles the details and computer stuff like Tech, and she is mission-focused like Crosshair. She picked up a ton of knowledge from her brothers, and it shows. With Echo and Emery, the story is more about Emery than it is about Echo. Emery has had an incredible arc this season. We saw her show signs of questioning last season, but this season she was confronted with her role in the experimentations on the children in the vault. All she needed was a catalyst to push her across the line, and Echo was the perfect candidate. We see her take responsibility for the children and get them off the planet so Echo and Omega can go back and rescue Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair. The climax scene on the bridge was an epic way for Hemlock to die. It was a team effort. Omega moved so Crosshair could get a clear shot, and Hunter held up Crosshair's arms so he could get a steady shot. They all knew each other's next steps, and that was the element that finally won out. 
Teamwork and loyalty to one another. When we see Echo and Emery go off to meet with Rex Rebellion, we get the idea that this isn't the last we've seen of Echo or Emery. I think Emery will be back at some point, especially with Keisha Castle Hughes being cast to voice her. Keisha is an Oscar-nominated actress who also performed in Game of Thrones, and it's likely that any live-action version of Emery will be played by Keisha as well. The last scene with Hunter and Omega is touching. I'd say as much, if not more, than the scene that ended the Clone Wars. Omega has grown into a young woman, and Hunter has gotten old. We find out that Wrecker and Crosshair are still alive as well. Hunter still sees himself as a father to Omega. She tells him that she's not a kid anymore, to which Hunter responds with, You're our kid, Omega. You always will be. I saw a few things online leading up to the episode that said Omega was going to get a bittersweet ending. I wouldn't say this is bittersweet. It's sad that Omega has grown up and is leaving home to find her own fight. But kids grow up and leaving home is what we're all supposed to do. It's sad because it's true and it brings us joy that Omega is going off to become the woman she needs to be. The guys were an integral part of her development, like any good parent is. It's fitting for a child to take those lessons and use them to become something. This ending makes me wonder if Omega will show up in her own show, either animated or live action. Maybe a resurrected version of Rogue Squadron. Overall, this was a fantastic end to the best show in Disney Star Wars thus far. I've never been a huge fan of TV series, but I've thoroughly enjoyed The Bad Batch. Its themes of brotherhood, being a warrior, freedom, loyalty, and honor all resonate with me as a veteran. With Disney Star Wars seemingly divided into two factions, the Filoni Favreau side and the woke feminist side, my only hope is that Filoni protects Omega like he did for Ahsoka, Sabine, and Bo-Katan from getting hijacked by identity and social politics. Let me know what you all think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content and the deeper discussion into the themes found in Star Wars, please hit the like button and subscribe to keep me in your feed.